Yeah, so I uh, when everything kind of shut down, I was in Vancouver um, for maybe two or three weeks. Uh, I didn't really, you know, suspect this thing to be carried out this long. And when things started kind of looking a little bit more grim, uh, my girlfriend and I decided to come back to San Diego, and uh, we've been here since. So uh, it's been nice. You know, the weather's good, so it's it's been uh, a good opportunity to kind of get outside. Um, you know, if it was cold, I think we'd be losing our minds even more, being forced to stay inside. But uh, with the good weather, we've been lucky. And, um, you know, we're just doing what we can to, to stay sane. We've talked to lots of your teammates about, you know, trying to stay in shape and the workouts that you guys have been assigned by the training staff. But from a goaltending perspective, uh, how difficult has this stretch been for you? And what do you think it'll be like once you're able to get back on the ice? Yeah, I mean... I, for me especially, I find like it takes a little bit of time for me to get get back to being sharp on the ice. Um, you know, I, I know like coming back on the ice after a you know a couple weeks off, three four weeks off after the season's over, it's it's definitely a little bit of a rust. Um, but it's gonna be tough. Uh, I think just just getting back into on ice shape. Um, you know, we're able to do these in home workouts, and, and those have been good, but. You know, there's definitely something to be said, uh, you know, the difference between being in, in off-ice shape and on-ice shape. So that'll definitely take, uh, for me at least, uh, a couple weeks. Can you remember the last time you would have been off the ice for this long other than injuries? Um, this is it. I mean, um, I mean, I think even with injuries included, like this is probably the most time I've been off the ice since I was eight or nine years old. So uh, it's definitely uh, an odd feeling. Um, a feeling that, you know, it can be overwhelming sometimes, you know, you just don't really feel like you're, you're yourself. Um, so it's, uh, it's definitely a, an opportunity to just kind of relax and, and try and get your mind off the game, I, I guess, as much as you can. Thank you. Next question is from Jay Janauer. Thatcher, uh, good morning. I'm curious what your thought process is in, in chatting with your teammates about the possibility that if the league comes back, we're hearing a lot of this hub city. Fingers crossed that maybe Vancouver is one of them. But if not, you could be away from, from family and, and friends for anywhere from two months to, to maybe even longer. What's the conversation been like? And is that something that you guys are comfortable with? Um, I mean, yeah, we're obviously we, we talk as a team every once in a while via text um, or, you know, calls with the union and, um, Obviously, everyone's situation is different. That's what kind of makes this this particular situation so tough. Um, everyone's going to have a different point of view given their status of family or, or what have you. But, I mean, it's tough um, for the guys with family. Like, being away from your kids and your wife for, you know, like you said, maybe four months is, is really tough. And potentially living in a hotel. And um, I just – I'm not sure how that's going to all play out. Um, I know all, all the guys are itching to get back, but there's definitely some, some logistical things that I think need to get sorted out before everyone's comfortable doing so. As a professional athlete, we know you want to get back. As fans, we'd like to see you get back. We're starting to hear some pushback, though, in English Premier League from a lot of their star players just in regards to safely returning to play. As a player, what's your concern about safely competing in a sport where there's contact, where there's sweat everywhere? There has to be a human component to this as well, Thatcher. Yeah, I mean, I think the two things when you think about safety are obviously the coronavirus and making sure that our bases are covered um, with guys contracting that and, and really being more exposed to it, being around teammates and being around other teams, being around staff at the rink, what have you. But, you know, I think for, for the other part of it, it's just – us not being on the ice for this long and then being thrown into a, a training camp, like guys are going to be have to going to have to be really careful and, and ease into things. You know, we can't just uh, be off the ice for this long and then expect to come back at it full force. Like we were in March, um, you know, guys' bodies are, are in different conditions, different shapes um, as they were, you know, in March. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of things on the uh, safety aspect side of it. And, um, you know, that's, that's one of the things I think that the, the league and the union and the players are trying to all work out. Thanks, Thatcher. Yep. Ian McIntyre is next. Hey, Thatcher, thank you for doing this uh, this morning. Are you in San Diego proper or which community are, are you in? 
Um, I'm in Coronado, so it's um, it's a little island just off downtown of San Diego. Uh, yeah. You take a bridge and yeah. Sure. Is that normally where you are in the off season, or do you do you typically spend time back in the Boston area and training? There? Um, yeah, so I was I was going back to Boston uh, to finish my degree, but um, since I've finished that, I've, I'm here for. I, I would have been coming home anyway, so. Okay. What you've had a lot of time, obviously, to think about this season, and and everybody hopes it's not over, but there is that possibility that it is. But to to this point, what do you think you learned uh, the most about yourself and what it's like to play at this level this year? Yeah, I mean, I think um, like especially towards the end there when Marky uh, tweaked his knee and and had to get that uh, operation done. Um, it just really showed me the difference between, you know, being a backup and being a starter. And, um, you know, it's something that as you're growing up, you watch it on TV and even in college, you, you're a little bit more, more around it. And then in the American league, and there's all these different adjustments to, you know, the different levels of play and, um, you know, the backup to starter, I think is a huge adjustment as well. Not, not, I mean, it's a little bit different because I'm already, you know, playing at that level. But, um, you know, having that added pressure, having that those added minutes, I think it's it's a big jump. And it, I think it was awesome for me to to see that firsthand and and kind of understand what came with that responsibility. And just one follow up to that, you know, when you began that stint, uh, the team was on the road. I think there were a couple of games where you probably felt you maybe could have played a little bit better. But at the time you didn't reveal much about your emotions and, and what you were going through uh, in hindsight. Can you share a little bit of, about that? Was it a hard time? Were you on putting a lot of pressure on, on yourself at that moment? Yeah. I mean, um, I felt really confident going into that. And um, I think that in those games, there were things that I did well, but at that time of year, it's not about, um, you know, different things that you're doing well, if the result isn't there. I think at that time of year, you know, it's all about the result. That's the only thing that matters. And had I been thrown in that situation, maybe, you know, let's say in December or, or January, when maybe the stakes aren't as high, I think it would have been a different, different feeling, different environment. Um, but I think that was good for me to come in, come in on those in that situation and just feel that. I mean, I haven't, I haven't really felt that much pressure um, in a long time, just, you know, being able to play, you know, college, American League. And, and I think that was really good for me. I learned a lot from it. And, you know, as I think, you know, I went on, I, I started feeling a lot more comfortable in that environment. And um, I was really starting to relish those opportunities. And I was starting to kind of learn about it and learn how to manage it. And I felt like I was kind of just getting on a roll when, when all this stuff kind of, kind of started getting going. So, um, you know, I think it was a huge opportunity for me to learn and um, just kind of take that with me going forward. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Stephen Wino. Hey, Thatcher, thank you very much for doing this. A lot of players have talked about wanting to have some family time or some personal time if you guys come back in kind of a quarantine bubble. What do you envision that looking like? What do you, what do you kind of hope the balance can be in terms of resuming the season but also kind of having a life that's not just hockey, hockey, hockey for all the time if you guys continue? Yeah, I mean, I have no idea, right? Look, I, I have no idea what that's going to look like. Um, you know, you hear different um, scenarios that are thrown out, different options that could potentially be the, the one that we're going to go with. But um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think everyone's going to have to make a sacrifice. Um, you know, players, owners, union. Um, I don't think that there is a scenario where everyone's going to be happy with the situation. Um, so for me personally, I, I mean, obviously I – I've thought about it. I hear what guys are saying and I think about that from my point of view and how that might affect me or how I would deal with that. Um, but at the end of the day, personally, I really have no idea uh, what the best scenario is. I'm kind of just going to go with the flow being a young guy. You know, <laughs> I don't have too many roots. You know, I've been living pretty much out of my car for the most part for the last, you know, six, seven years, just going from place to place. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what the the final say is for sure. Thank you. And we've got David Quadrelli next. Thatcher, a few weeks back, Jacob Markstrom called Ian Clark one of the best goalie coaches in the world. How important was he for you when you were unexpectedly thrown into the starters' role toward the end of the season here? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I've had a good relationship with Ian. Um, you know, he's taught me a lot um, just about being being up in the NHL. And we had always talked about, you know, where I wanted to go with my game and what my goals were. And obviously being a starter is, you know, kind of kind of the focal point of that. And when all that kind of went down, I, I think he, he saw a good opportunity for me. And we had a lot of talks about, you know, what it would take and, um, you know, after some of those games on the road there, you know, sitting down and he was never, you know, shy about it. He was just very blunt. He's like, look, you're in a position right now where, you know, it's a little bit of added pressure and, you know, you're going to either deal with that or, or crumble. It's up to you. And that's when I kind of came home and, and felt like I was kind of stepping up my game and, um, you know, wanted to be there for my teammates, for, for the city of Vancouver. And um, so, yeah, I mean, he, he's great. I've, I've really enjoyed working with him and, and Jacob. And uh, I think it's been really good for my game. It feels like with every season, you've kind of taken that next step. What do you think that next step for you is next season? Um, just more consistent. Um, you know, I think I learned a lot this year being in the NHL. Uh, for a long period of time and you know for me I thought there were a, a few games where you know I'd have a good game or good two games and then my my second or third start on, on that streak wouldn't be as sharp or you know there'd be something where it wasn't quite right so um, being the starter being able to play as much um, as I did there the last couple of weeks I think it was a good good thing for me to kind of learn you know how to be more consistent and and what it really took uh, in between games and, and that kind of thing. Awesome. Thank you. Jackie Spiegel is next. Hey, Thatcher. Thanks for doing this. Um, I was just curious if the season had ended back on April 4th and let's say just hypothetically the Canucks hadn't made the playoffs, what, what's your normal off-season routine? And is that kind of how you're looking at this time right now? Um. Yeah, I mean, it's been weird the last few years just because, uh, like I said, I had been going back to Boston uh, for classes, which is like a six, seven week chunk out of the summer. And then I'm home for three weeks and then I pretty much start training out in Connecticut. Um, so, I mean, my, my mindset's usually the same, just my location's pretty different. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's been tough, though, like because you don't want to fully – you know, detach from the mindset of being in the season or, um, you know, really like just sit, sit on the couch and relax. Like you want to, you want to keep your mind and your body sharp. Obviously we can't be on the ice, but there's something to be said about, you know, kind of letting everything go after the season and, and getting, you know, letting your mind and, and body rejuvenate a little bit. So it's been kind of a weird, you know, midpoint between not really being able to decide what, what would be best. Um, so I'm kind of just trying to keep one foot on each line. And, um, you know, when we do get the word, I'll be able to hop in full full commit. You, you talked a little earlier about injuries. I mean, how much is – for a goalie, how much is that a concern or does that tinker with what you – how you get ready with that, let's say, month of, of training camp? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing for me, especially, like, if I just took a bunch of time off and got back on the ice, I'd – I'd definitely be at more risk of getting hurt. Um, so for me right now, it's it's definitely a lot of working out and staying in shape, but it's also maintenance work as far as stretching, mobility, and that kind of thing, just to make sure that when I do get back on the ice, I'm not you know putting myself in a bad position, getting into those those goalie positions where you know it's hard to recreate them off the ice. Um, so you're just doing the best you can to to prepare yourself. And just real quick, is there a time frame that you think is is needed to be ready to go back in is it like a that month or three weeks or what, what what's your most comfort level with that oh, I don't know I I mean in this position that we're in I think um you know I'm gonna have to be ready regardless it's not gonna be up to me I'm just gonna have to kind of conform to the situation but I know it, when it's a summertime situation I'm getting back on the ice getting ready for camp I definitely like to take my time but like I said I'm probably not gonna have that luxury in this situation Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to Rob Williams. Hi, Thatcher. Uh, you had some ups and downs uh, this season. I'm wondering if you got any advice or words of encouragement from any of your teammates or coaches, and if anything in particular stands out maybe during some of the tougher times. 
Um, yeah, I mean, my teammates were great all year. I, I was super thankful for them. I was super grateful for the relationship I had with Marky. I was able to kind of talk to him and, and bounce ideas off him if I needed to. Um, and I mean, my, a lot of my um, relation with the coaching staff went through Ian Clark. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm talking to him every day and, uh, working with him on and off the ice, going over video, that kind of thing. And, um, and everything that happens, he's, he's blunt with you and he, uh, uses it as an opportunity to learn. And, uh, that's something that I really appreciate about him. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, you know, there's some times where, you know, things were looking a little bit more grim, uh, so to speak. And then there were a lot of times where it felt really good and, and, um, you know, was developing and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, Ian was great uh, kind of managing both sides of things. Thank you. Uh, Josh Clipperton, we've got you next. Hey, Thatcher, thanks for uh, doing this. Um, the video is coming out of Sweden of uh, Marky being on the ice, uh, Lundqvist as well. I'm just wondering how much of an advantage it'll be for those guys, and do you wish that you were born Swedish? Yes, I do. <laughs> I, um... <laughs> I was texting with Marky a little bit ago and he got his gear shipped out there and I, I was just, I was call I was just texting him to check in or whatever. And he was like, yeah, I just got my gear shipped out. Like I'm skating uh, tomorrow. And I was just like, Oh my God, like, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Like I, I would just be in such a better like mental state if I could be getting on the ice every once in a while. Um, but I was just joking with him that I might have to fly out there and crash on his couch or something. But yeah, I mean, it's, it is what it is. Like they're, they're in a much better, you know, position um, just as far as the country uh, it's not being, you know, locked down as, as heavily as North America is. So um, just kind of way the, the cookie crumbles on that one, but glad he's getting on the ice for sure. That's, that's gotta be nice. Does it feel like it's fair? Like, I know you're happy your teammates on the ice, but I mean, some guys are going to have so much more of an advantage. I mean, you know, Swedish players as like skaters as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I mean, it, I don't know. It's a tricky question, right? Like, I think if, um, you know, I think there's enough guys in the league that aren't Swedish that I think it's going to play itself out evenly. Um, obviously, guys that are teams that have more Swedish guys, I maybe they, they have a little bit of an advantage. But I think training camp and, and, you know, the time spent back in the city before the season resumes, I think that'll be sufficient enough to, to even the playing field for sure. Great. Thanks for doing this. All right. We're going to return to Ian McIntyre. I know you'd miss it, Thatcher, if we went through a full press conference and I didn't ask you about next season and Marky's, <laughs> Marky's status. But we are that much closer uh, to it. And again, because you've had time to think about things, uh, does that add uncertainty and it, it affects you directly on what your role is going to be. You know, what are your thoughts uh, about that? And has it, has it changed at all since the middle of the season when we tried asking you about this? Yeah. I mean, I haven't thought about it to be honest. Um, I think maybe if the season was canceled for sure, it maybe pop into my head, but I mean, obviously I know the situation. I think everyone does, but um, there are so many things that are going on right now. I, I don't think that's, you know, at the top of anyone's list, to be honest. Um, guys are trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be the, the situation going forward. And I think, like I said, once the season is canceled, if it ever gets to that point, then, you know, maybe things might change as far as, you know, priority. But uh, for now, I think it's just, you know, a matter of getting back into town and, and getting back on the ice. Fair enough. Thanks. Uh, we're going to give Ed Willis a chance uh, by phone here. He's with us. Ed, are you Thanks. there? I am. Thank you, Ben. Hey, hey, Thatcher. Listen, I understand most of these questions are hypothetical in nature and they're hard, hard for you to answer, but um, the border between uh, BC and the States is still closed. That can change tomorrow. Best case scenario seems to be you'd be facing another 14-day quarantine when you come back. Uh, have you thought about that? And did, did just what, what are your thoughts of the situation? Yeah, I've definitely thought about um, coming back to Van even before, um, you know, the staff or, or the league is asking me to. Um, but, I mean, that, that is something to consider. You know, the 14-day quarantine would be tough just because 
you know, I, I think it would be beneficial if I was able to, you know, go into the rink and, and work out, maybe not with anyone, but if I had an empty gym to myself, uh, I think that wouldn't be an issue. And if I have to do the 14 day quarantine, then obviously that wouldn't be a possibility. So, um, I think it, it is definitely um, potentially something that I would be into. I, I'm just going to give it a little bit of more time just to okay. make sure it's the right choice. Thanks, Pastor. Yep. I'm going to give everyone one last chance while we have Thatcher here. Um, to ask a question. I actually have a question for you, Thatcher, about uh, you've added a new member of the family. What can you tell us yeah. about your, your newest addition in Delilah? Yeah, I'm super pumped. Um, I never got to have a dog growing up because my parents weren't together when I was growing up. So it was just way too much. So um, been thinking about this day for a long time. <laughs> but yeah, my girlfriend, and I got a dog. Her name's Delilah. Um, she's super sweet. Um, She's actually at the vet right now. She wasn't feeling too good last night or, or this morning. But, um, yeah, it's been awesome, man. I've, I've loved it. It's definitely as much work as everyone was warning me about. So um, it's good, though. Now the, now's the time to do it. You know, I got nothing nothing else really going on. So training her, uh, you know, day and night. So it's been good. And what breed is she? She's a Bernice Mountain Dog Doodle. So, uh Okay. It's the same dog as Stetchy, same dog as Phoebe, but she doesn't shed, which is huge. She looks very similar, but there's no loose hairs going around the house, which is big for me. Are you starting to see uh, some character from her too? She's got her own personality. Yeah, she's actually being such a snob this morning. Like she's usually like super mellow in the morning. Like she wakes up and she'll cuddle with you while you're having coffee. And this morning she was just, she was letting us know like she's ready to go today. Like she was buzzing around grabbing stuff and I think she's getting into her teenage years her teenage dog years so she's gonna have a little bit of an attitude with us maybe going forward for a couple weeks sounds like fun uh we'll keep you for one more question uh Thatcher this one's from uh Kevin Woodley just a second Kevin I'm gonna unmute you apologies yeah, I think he's on mute maybe all right Sorry, just when you were talking about coming back to Vancouver, Thatcher, I wanted, like how much the opportunity to get on the ice up here as that's opened up. Was that part of the thought process um, that there are privates available for one on ones in some of the rinks locally? And secondly, have you ever worked on synthetic ice or anything like that? You know, being from San Diego, where I know sometimes ice can be a challenge, is that anything you've looked at? Um, yeah, so to answer your first part, um, I think like the big of you coming back to Van was more just having a gym. Uh, having availability to a gym um, like it's tough to work out at home for me uh, especially for this period of time um, for me it's it's good to be in an environment where you know people are working out and people are you know kind of have that same mindset so it's tough um, just kind of staying staying on it at home uh, so I think that would be huge getting in the van but I have worked on synthetic ice before. Um, I worked on it with Jamie Storr when I played for the Junior Kings. Um, and it's it's definitely different. Um, I think it's okay if you're just working on maybe tracking pucks and things like that. But as far as movement goes, I don't find it very useful um, just because it is so much different than ice itself. Uh, it would be like, you know, working on your T pushes in roller skates or something like that. Like it's – for me, it's just not the same – um, same dynamic. So, um, yeah, I, I've thought about that, but I just, I didn't think it was really worth it. I don't even have my gear anyway. It's still locked up in Vancouver. Thanks. Okay. With that, I think, uh, we'll thank everyone for joining and, and certainly thank you Thatcher for taking the time today. We certainly appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks guys. Appreciate it.